Hi, welcome to the first part of the new series I have of a Z80 project uh, where we're going to start and build a, uh, a Z80 computer pretty much from scratch and I know this is somewhat of a continuation it's actually a restart of a project I did personally um, I only documented it on my website which is uh, linked below and uh, I didn't get too far with it I did get it to actually put things in and out of the memory as it should do, and uh, but I couldn't get the A255 working at the time. Although I had to stop because, but I couldn't do too much because I had my knee surgery. And, uh, there's all the wiring at the back, bit of a rat's nest, and uh, and there was an expansion port I put right here, which is actually a pin for pin of the Z80 itself. Um, I intend to do what I intend to do is to have the Z80 and expansion ports along it and the uh, the clock and reset circuit on the main board and then all the project ports we're going to make with memory and uh, IO whatever uh, comes after it we'll plug onto those boards so we can uh, we can change and upgrade them as time goes on now the bus will be a uh, like a direct one for one with the Z80 as we have here uh, and all the uh, address decoding will be done on the individual cards that goes into it which we may be using uh, <coughs> EFROMs for doing that I hope so maybe it'll work maybe it won't we'll find out that's why we're doing it in cards so we don't have to keep redesigning the whole Z80 board as we go along <coughs> But today we're going to be focusing on a um, on getting a clock up and running because that is the heart of every uh, every computer is the actual clock beat itself. And uh, there's two different ways of doing it. Um, I will be showing a low speed version, which we'll be using for uh, debugging and going through the basics of the Z80 processor when we come to that. That may be the next episode. And, uh, and then we'll be going through a higher speed version which has been commonly used in uh, a lot of Z80 computers over the years. Uh, what I've done is I've uh, I got some circuits set up on my bench with the oscilloscope, the new oscilloscope. So we, that's really allowing me to do this. Because before I'd just tell you about it and you just have to imagine the, the waveforms. Um, but yeah, so, um, so yeah, without further ado, I will, uh, I'll take you straight to the bench and, uh, then we can get onto the, uh, the low speed, um, uh, oscillator circuit. Okay, so here's the, uh, the circuit, which, uh, I have set up. <clears throat> now, I'll move it over here, and you'll see that the circuit shown on the right of the screen uh, is a representation of what's on the left of the screen. I currently have the uh, an adjustable power supply hooked up to it. Uh, it's set for 5 volts but it's not on yet. You see I haven't hooked it up. And, uh, and I also have the oscilloscope probes at hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm gonna move the camera and then I will uh, We'll test the voltage, and then we'll uh, we'll test the circuit, and hopefully we'll get ourselves a uh, a nice uh, square wave out of it. It should be one hertz. Right, so I'll get the test meter out. Get you on the DC volts, and we'll get this on. You can read it from here, but anyway, um, these should say about five volts, five point zero six. I don't think it's focusing on that, unfortunately. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get this meter out of the way, and we'll hook up the scope to the appropriate point. It's pin three, you know, put 
on the 555. Red goes up here, black goes down here, and uh, safety glasses, hydrolytic cap. So, I'm going to turn on my, uh, my scope. Are we ready? And I'm going to leave zero there. And let's turn this on. See if the auto can find it. No. I think it's too slow for the auto to find it. Channel A only. Trigger auto, okay. Uh, time per division. That's the problem, it's such a slow one that we can't get it from the frequency counter, catch it. Mm. No, I don't think it can. But anyway, that's, that is about a one hertz source unfortunately I can't lock it in on here so what I'll do is I'll take the power off there and we'll replace this cap with a small one this one was a hundred sorry a ten microfarad actually not too many to choose from I do have some ones here Let's give this one a go. Oop. Now this one should be. Let's do this on auto. There we go. Hmm. Let's measure 200 kilohertz. Okay. Let's see, uh, it's not measuring that correctly, that's probably why. Uh, onto there. No, it is measuring that correctly. That's a 200 kilohertz wave. Now let's see where's ground in this case. Okay, so that is above ground and uh, about 5.1 volts peak to peak. Not bad. Alright. Oh. What if I was to put two of those in parallel? I just realised that's. That wasn't in. That was not in. That makes sense. Okay. <laughs> the cap's leg was in this rail, which isn't connected to anything, so it it become a different a different value, I suppose. Okay, that was ten. Uh, that was one microfarad. So let's go down a scale to a hundred nanofarad. 
See how it feels about hot swapping these. I don't think it cares that much. Hmm. I don't like the fact that that's creeping down. Okay. Mm. Hmm. Okay, so that's um, 246 hertz. Now, if I put that in parallel with a uh, another, I put that in parallel with a one microfarad. Let's see what happens. Yeah. All right. I do not believe I have any 10s, unfortunately. I do have... Let's see. Hmm. I have a 4.7 nano powered. So let's stick a 4.7 in there. Let's see what happens. Go on, you know you want to. 2.2 kilohertz. Okay. And a 4.7 in parallel with a 4.7. Goes about 1.1 kilohertz. Hmm. That is close to, uh, to 10 nanofarad there. And I don't believe I got anything smaller than that. Not a hand, anyway. I think I got it. I got a 100 picofarad. Let's give that a try. Eighty kilohertz. That's not bad. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. <clears throat> we got a few, um, a few select low frequency signals there we can play with, and. Uh, that, that would be good for the, the low speed debugging. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, that circuit may not be the, uh, the blazing fast speed of gigahertz, which people are used to with their computers these days, but um, several tens of hertz is um, more than enough to debug basic uh, computer operation, especially in the, in the beginning. Uh, I'll probably have a, a selectable oscillator for the for the Z80 computer. I'll have the 555 based slow speed one, as well as the fast speed one, which I will be showing you in a few minutes. Um, <clears throat> the reason is, if um, you know, if we do it at slow speed, we can get it going down as one uh, cycle per second, one hertz, and. Um, which allows us to uh, to debug it, but I think tens of kilohertz is uh, plenty enough for um, low speed debugging, especially with the uh, <clears throat> my logic analyzer. But anyway, yeah. So uh, 
based on the next circuit is based on the 7404 hex inverter and it's been around for many years uh, so let's go to the bench and have a look at it okay here we have a classic circuit hooked up and uh, as you can see it's the circuit on the right here taken from the z80 diagram now um, a lot of these components ain't exactly right unfortunately I got 200 uh, nanofarad caps in series, so it's 50 nanofarad. But the, um, of course, the diagram calls for a uh, 500 picofarad. I put 100 picofarad and it didn't quite work, but this seems to get some results, so I may have to tweak it with uh, some different values to see what I can get. So, anyway, let's get you back in the holder. Okay, so I got the power hooked up as normal, and as you can see on the screen, there we go. So you can see the frequency counter when it comes on, and let's flick the switch. Now you can see it's not the cleanest square wave, if you can call it a square wave, but it's but it's there. It's doing the it does the job. Okay, I'm trying to see what other caps I got. I got some 82 pico powers. Maybe I can put some of them in parallel. So we'll, I'll come back and I'll try that. Okay, I got um, five 82 pico powered caps in parallel, so it should be like 400 and sync pico powered. Let's, uh, let's give it a try. No doesn't seem to oscillate maybe add an extra extra one to it nah doesn't like it well, if we try a hundred nanofarads on its own It likes that. Nope. Okay, well, let's try. Hmm. Fifty nanofarad seems to be. Uh, it. So let's uh, let's throw some of these four hundred ones in. But doesn't do it now. I don't think that was the 400 one, but 40. Okay, come on. Yeah, he likes those. This one is a 4.7 nanofarad. <clears throat> but anyway, but as you can see, we're 3.99960 megahertz. We're as close to uh, 4 megahertz as we need. That chip is getting quite warm. Uh, 150 milliamps. That doesn't seem right. But then again, this other circuit is running at the same time. Yeah, so it's not right there. Probably uh, to do with the way I've rounded it. But, yeah, let's see. 5.25 volts peak to peak. But yeah, that is a um, a fairly decent circuit to be used for the uh, the clock circuit. And I'm uh, I'm quite happy with that. It's either that or use a um, Another, another can oscillator like was done here, but this clock should be good enough to uh, to run <clears throat> the Z80 computer. So I'm very happy with that. Well, there's the uh, the two clock circuits that I have of interest, and uh, the 555 one is a very common one. Um, it's not the most accurate one. I wouldn't use it for real-time clock purposes, but 
like for basic computer testing it's it's going to be perfectly fine albeit a bit slow but that's one reason i picked it because it was uh, of sufficiently low speed that will be useful and somewhat stable um well, it's a 7404 i've got a 4 megahertz on there i could actually put a higher one higher crystal on there but i do do want to go around about 4 megahertz on my uh, my clock for this computer at least in the beginning it could be upgraded later but i'll probably socket the crystal or um, well i don't really need to it'll be easy to desolder it or desolder it depending on where you come from um but yeah so so yeah that's the basic clock and uh, should you have any questions or comments please uh, leave them below and uh, and hopefully we can we can move on to the actual z80 uh, itself tomorrow probably have a look at the no, not, not tomorrow sorry next video we probably look at the reset circuit as well as a simple uh, checker circuit which is available on the Thomas Shearer website I'm sorry if I get it wrong but if you look below I'll link to his website but it's a great repository, re great repository for Z80 circuits and he shows you how you can just hook LEDs up and make it count through the address lines to test it but until next time thanks for watching and goodbye